Rich Folly here, and I'm talking right now to Rick Bragg, whose book is Jerry Lee Lewis, His Own Story. First of all, what a pleasure to have you on our set. It's oh, great. it's my pleasure. Yeah, it's fun, wonderful. The, the Jerry Lee Lewis story is fascinating to music lovers. Uh, there's so much, there's so many layers to this story, obviously, but, but how did you, first of all, how did you come to the story? How did you come to write the biography? Well, I grew up with his music kind of pouring out the windows of pulpwood trucks and pickups and, you know, raggedy old Chevrolet Biscaynes as a kid a whole lot of shaking going on. It was all over the radio. And then his country hits. Uh, by the time I was a teenager, his country hits were the biggest thing on country radio. And so I, I knew all about him. Uh, so when one day my phone rings, and I, I'd love to tell you that you know he saved my life in a bar fight in Pascagoula or <laughs> something, that ain't it. But I, my agent called me from New York. She said, you got any interest in doing a book on Jerry Lee? Did Jerry Lee reach out originally to you? Uh, I don't think so. No, I think I think that the uh, the publishing company uh, Harper Collins, you know, you know, bought the rights to his story, and then they kind of went looking around for somebody they thought could survive Jerry Lee, and I, I think they settled on me. I'm not sure if that was fortunate or not, but it sure wasn't dull. Yeah, I'm sure. I can't wait to talk about some of it. You say survived Jerry Lee. I think a lot of people are amazed that Jerry Lee survived. I mean, he's been through so much. Uh, so many of his contemporaries are gone now. There's a few, you mentioned Chuck Berry, or, or right. a few who are still here. Mm -hmm. but, but Jerry Lee, for all the crazy things that happened in his life, here he is still alive, and he's made it. There was kind of this magical moment when I was interviewing him, and he was eating an ice cream float. And, uh, and he had a tiny, tiny little piece of, of ice cream right here, you know, and he looked up from it and said, you know, I busted a guy in the mouth with the butt end of the microphone stand one time. And there's something about that little bit of ice cream and that confession. It just told me, this is going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> you knew it from the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how many times did you get to sit down with him and, and spend time with him? I don't know how many days, but across two summers, uh, he was not doing well. He had had, uh, you know, pneumonia twice. He had uh, crippling arthritis in his back. Uh, you know, he had a compound fracture that resulted in an infection that almost killed him. But then again, his obit's been written a thousand times. Right. So Jerry Lee's got something in him beyond science. And uh, uh, day after day after day after day, he lay in that bed, in that dark bedroom, you know, bullet hole here and there in the wall. And I sat in a rocker beside him, and he kind of took me off down to make an Elvis cry, you know fighting Carl Perkins across the hood of a Buick, you know, it, 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 it was fun. Man, I have to tell you, there's a picture, and I've, I've seen the picture a million times, but there's a picture in the book that's um, a picture of Carl Perkins, Jerry Lee Lewis, uh, Johnny Cash, and Elvis. It's yeah. at Sun Records, um, and it's called the, the Million Dollar Quartet. Quartet. Yeah. And you look at that photo, and you look at it, and there's something in the book that really caught me when, 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 uh, when Jerry Lee Lewis said, we, we were legends and we didn't even know it. We were legends and we didn't even know it. He, uh, he told me the day he first met Elvis, and he was at Sun Records playing session work with Carl Perkins on a song called Matchbox, which a lot of us old people can recall. And uh, Sam Phillips, you know, who snagged lightning you know, more than once, said, told Jerry Lee, Elvis is... Uh, Elvis is coming by. He wants to meet you. And uh, Elvis walks in the door, and he's got a Las Vegas, beautiful Las Vegas showgirl with him, uh, drives up in a Lincoln Continental, and sees Jerry Lee and says, I've been meaning to meet that piano player. And Jerry Lee could have just like walked on air, you know, as, 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 as lacking in humility as Jerry Lee is. That was one of those great moments in his life. And uh, Elvis had seen Jerry Lee's red Cadillac convertible outside and said, man, that's a beautiful car. And Jerry Lee said, like he was born in a Cadillac, and he got it like four days before, said, you know, I try to keep a good car. <laughs> and there's something beautiful about these two Southern boys, not talking about hit records, not talking about fame, talking about cars. Yeah. That, it seems to me that... Um those early days, they're so heady, and those mm -hmm. guys were like so just in that moment. Mm -hmm. um, but if you go back even further, the, the, there's so many legendary stories about him, like the fact that his dad, Elmo, had mortgaged the farm for the piano, and there's a picture of that piano in here. I don't mm -hmm. know if that piano still exists. It's still in his hallway. So how did he find that? Is he, is he held it all these years? 
He's had it all these years. The IRS uh, once confiscated it and decided it was of no value, so he got it back. Wow. And, uh, you know, he, it's the that piano, piano that started it all. Yeah. You know, probably the best investment in American music history. Wow, that's pretty amazing. There's, a, there's two sides of Jerry Lee, though. There's that, those, when he was just on that remarkable run where it was all just instinct for him. Right. And, and, he was, and he had Sam Phillips and the other people around him. And then there's the older Jerry Lee who found himself in trouble constantly um, with multiple marriages and young, you know, underage girls and, and drinking and car crashes. Um, how do you reconcile those two? I mean, or were they just destined to kind of crash together? I, I just think that they're, you know, like most of us, you know, they're just two men sewn up in this one skin. And, but with Jerry Lee, there's probably 14 or 15 men sewn up in that skin. He's just different. My favorite story of, of, of Jerry Lee being Jerry Lee was he was running from the police in a Rolls Royce. Not only Jerry Lee would run <laughs> from the police in northern Mississippi in a Rolls Royce, and he doesn't make the turn, and he rolls it, and he's laying in there upside down, and the police come up, you know, guns drawn, and they say, you know, get out, and Jerry Lee's listening to a song he loves on the tape deck, and he says, I'll come out when I finish hearing this song. So the police have to stand there with their guns drawn, waiting for Jerry Lee to finish hearing his song. That's who he is. How did, how did uh, Sam Phillips originally find Jerry Lee? Jerry Lee and his daddy were in a cornfield. You know, it's a southern gothic life, you know. Uh, Jerry Lee and his daddy are in a cornfield, and Nashville has turned down Jerry Lee, just giving him the cold show. He scared the country music people to death. And the Louisiana Hayride, which gave Elvis his start, has turned their back on him. It won't have anything to do with him. He had too much boogie-woogie in his piano. And... Uh, he asked his daddy, he says, Daddy, I want to go to Memphis and uh, talk to that man, Sam Phillips, the one that made Elvis a star. And his daddy straightened up from pulling corn and said, well, I don't blame you, son. I, I would, too. They gather a bunch of eggs, uh, sell the eggs to finance their trip to Memphis, drive up. Sam Phillips ain't there. Jerry Lee says, well, I'm going to sit down on this step, and I ain't leaving until Sam Phillips hears my music. So the engineer lets him do a cut of Crazy Arms, the beautiful country music song. And uh, Sam Phillips heard it sometime later. And he didn't say, this guy's going to be my new Elvis or this guy's going to be a, a, a superstar. All he said was, I can sell that. And that's how he it knew. started. It's an amazing story. Um, and what I found as I read this, how many of those nuggets are in there and that time you spent with Jerry Lee uh, where he took you in for those months, clearly um, or something that you'll never forget, certainly. And for readers now, we get to share it with you. I hope they like it. Uh, Not too many dull pages. You know? no, none. Jerry Lee Lewis, his own story. We're with Rick Bragg. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a this, wonderful book. This is easy. That's yeah, one. Thanks. Thank you.